Let us pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Jesus, through the immaculate heart of Mary, I offer you my prayers, works, joys and sufferings on this day for all the intentions of your sacred heart in union with the holy sacrifice of the Mass throughout the world in reparation for my sins, for the intentions of all my relatives and friends, and in particular for the intentions of the Holy Father. Amen. The Intentions of the Holy Father for the month of June For the abolition of torture We pray that the international community may commit in a concrete way to ensuring the abolition of torture and guarantee support to victims and their families. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. My dear friends, the Word of God welcomes us this morning. And as we prepare ourselves to enter into this new day, as we prepare ourselves to spend this time with God, let us close our eyes at this moment and let us praise the Lord let us thank Him that He has woken us up this morning. He has given us good health. He has kept us in His love. Most importantly, we see that at every moment His gaze is upon us. He loves us. He protects us. He guides us. And for that, let us praise the Lord, let us thank the Lord. In our life, we see that there are many moments wherein we do not recognize the presence of God in our lives. There are certain moments that we take for granted and therefore it becomes difficult for us to recognize the graces and the blessings that we receive from the Lord. And therefore, as we begin today's morning offering, let us thank the Lord for all those blessings that He has given us. We begin by thanking God for the gift of life, for the various talents, for the various capabilities that He has given us. We also thank Him for the gift of our family members, friends, relatives, near and dear ones and all those who play a very important role in our lives. We also continue to pray for all those who have been instrumental in shaping and molding us and we ask the Lord to bless them abundantly and give them good health of mind and body. We also thank the Lord for giving us this new day a day that may help us to complete some of the tasks that 
were left incomplete or maybe today may give us an opportunity to reach out to others. Whatever we do today, let us ask the Lord to be part of it. Let us ask the Lord to guide us, to show us the way, so that whatever we do may indeed reveal His love, joy and mercy to the world. At the same time, let us also thank the Lord for the various opportunities that He has given us. Opportunities to use our talents and abilities for the better good. Also, we thank Him for the experiences that we have had. We all remember and cherish the good experiences. But there have been also experiences that have been bitter, that have been difficult. But nonetheless, these have been experiences that have taught us valuable lessons in life. And therefore, we thank the Lord for these experiences as well. Finally, we also Thank the Lord for always being there with us, guiding us, protecting us and let us ask Him to do the same today so that every step that we take, every word that we utter and every action that we do may reveal and radiate the peace, joy and mercy of Christ to people around us. And therefore, my dear friends, let this day be a day of joy and blessings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And therefore, today we shall reflect and meditate on Psalm 52. As usual, we shall have an overview of the psalm and then we shall go into its details. Now, generally speaking, Psalm 52 is a lament that is written by David. And it is likely in response to the treachery of Doeg the Adomite. Now, we know that Doeg the Adomite had betrayed David to King Saul. And this psalm is divided into two main sections. So, the first section contains verses 1 to 5. And this will describe the wickedness of Doeg and his eventual downfall. While the second part of the psalm, the second section, which has verses 6 to 9, they offer a contrast between the wickedness of Doeg and the faithfulness of God. Similarly, we see that when we look at the psalm, the psalm gives us a picture of what it is to be faithful and what it is to trust and place our faith in God. So therefore, verse 1 begins with David directly addressing Doeg calling him a mighty man who boasts of evil deeds. And then David asks why Doeg boasts of evil and warns him that God will eventually bring him down. In the second verse, we see that David's warning to Doeg continues. And this reminds him that God's judgment will be swift and thorough. David compares Doeg to a sharp razor and a deceitful tongue, highlighting the danger that his words and actions pose. Moving on to verse 3, we see that the verse emphasizes the extent of evil that Doeg does, describing him as the one who loves evil more than good, and therefore lying more than speaking truth. Therefore, we see that Doeg has been one who has been lying a lot rather than speaking the truth and wanting to know the truth. And therefore, Doeg is warned by David that his love of evil will ultimately result in his destruction. And therefore, the following verse, verse 4 also continues this same description that David does of Doeg's wickedness, comparing him to a devouring fire that consumes everything in its path. And therefore, David notes that Doeg has set himself against those who are righteous and warns that God will eventually cut him off. And therefore, this first section is concluded in verse 5, where we have David again warning that God will bring Doeg down. David notes that Doeg will be uprooted and driven away from the land of the living and that the righteous will ultimately 
see his downfall. So therefore, this first part of the psalm is kind of a message of hope to most of us. We live in a world where we see so much of evil, where we see so much of corruption. We see so many things being done in the wrong manner. And sometimes we may ask, how is this permitted? How does this happen? And here this first part of the psalm gives us hope, saying that eventually all those who do evil will have to face the consequences. They will be cut off from the Lord. And therefore, the first section of the psalm emphasizes that we need to do good. We need to focus on the truth, focus on righteousness. We now move to the second section of the psalm. And the second section shows us how David contrasts the wickedness of Doeg with the faithfulness of God. And therefore, this begins in verse 6 with a statement of faith in which David declares that he trusts in God's steadfast love and mercy. Now verse 7 continues with David's description of God's faithfulness, noting that God will ultimately bring down those who trust in their own strength and wealth. And therefore, we are called to place our faith and trust in God. When we place our faith in ourselves or in the worldly things, ultimately they will lead to our downfall. And therefore David compares the wicked to a green olive tree, which may flourish for a time, but will eventually wither and die. And therefore nothing is permanent in today's world. Therefore we need to place our faith and trust in the Lord, so that when the time comes, the Lord will take care of us. Verse 8 emphasizes this contrast between the wickedness of Doeg and the faithfulness of God. As David now declares that he will praise God forever for his steadfast love and justice. Now David notes that he will wait for God to act, trusting that God will eventually bring down the evil and vindicate the righteous. And therefore Psalm 9 will conclude this second section of the psalm. And the conclusion is nicely done with a statement of hope. As here David declares that he will continue to wait for God's salvation and that he will trust in God's name. David notes that God's name is a strong tower in which the righteous may take refuge and that God will ultimately bring salvation to his people. And therefore, my dear friends, as we reflect on Psalm 52, there may be some kind of a thought or a statement that which eventually would have touched us. Therefore, let us remain with that thought, let us remain with that sentence or statement. And let us reflect on it and apply it to our lives so that it may take root in us. And therefore, as we do this, let us ask the Lord to bless us, to be with us, to guide us, so that whatever we do today, it may be for His greater glory, that we may be able to distinguish between what is good and what is evil, and that we may follow on the path of righteousness. Prayer to Saint Michael the Archangel for protection. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince, of the heavenly hosts by the power of God 
thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Act of Adoration O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Saint Gertrude Prayer for Souls in Purgatory Eternal Father, I offer thee the most precious blood of thy divine Son, Jesus, in union with the masses said throughout the world today for all the holy souls in purgatory, for sinners everywhere, for sinners in the universal church, those in my own home and within my family. Amen. May the divine assistance remain always with us, and may the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God Rest in peace. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. <laughs>